Hey all, Matt with Listen Up. We're here in New York City going to the House of Sound. Let's take a look. Oh. Hey guys, welcome to the House of Sound. Let's come in and listen to some stuff. Awesome, man. Let's do it. The House of Sound is a destination where style and technology come together, offering guests the chance to spend the day indulging in hi-fi and home theater works of art. This is a space to experience the best gear made by Macintosh, Sonos Faber, Rotel Michi, and Project, all in an exquisite Manhattan townhome featuring impeccable design and top-class hospitality. Yeah, so here we are on uh, the second reference system we have in the house. Um, this is personally my favorite selection of equipment that we have in the house, um, which is interesting because it's also in what is objectively the worst room to put this equipment in in the house, but that's kind of the point, right? Yeah, this is a very like living room room. Exactly. Like, you'd be stoked to have this if this was your house, but it's not unobtainium. It's not, it's, it's all, but it's also very sonically imperfect, right? So if we look behind here, we have half of a wall on this side of the room. This wall is all glass. We've got design in here with hard surfaces all over the place. Um, but we've done a lot of uh, 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 really meticulous speaker setup and once again, using really nice equipment, including another MEN 220. So in this room, I did a lot more of the microphone readings because it's such an odd shape and we got really amazing results. I mean, even around the corner into the, this L-shaped room, we was able to do readings in there and I got some really good comments, but even in that area, off of the axis of the speakers, you're still getting good sonic imaging out of these things. That's amazing. Um, so if we look at the rest of the equipment here, we start out at the top with the C2700 Macintosh All Tube preamp. Uh, our sources connected to it are an MCD600 and an MT5. Those all go out into the MEN220. And then we go out into a pair of the MC3500 Mark IIs. So these are the second generation of the amplifier that powered Woodstock. So if you were backstage at Woodstock, there were dozens and dozens of original MI 3500s because it was originally an industrial amp, which is That's why right. it's got a silver face instead of a black face. Um, really, really beautiful sound. You've got four pairs of EL506S's in there providing the power. It's a slightly different version of a KT88. Um, and then those go out into a pair of these Sonus Faber Amati G5s. Um, so absolutely wonderful latest generation of Sonus Faber speakers. There's a lot of really cool de designs in here. The new mid-range driver with the phase plug gives us a physical way to uh, affect the timing of the drivers. Sure. So this way, the tweeter, the mid-range, and the woofers are all performing ideally the way we want to without having to do electronic stuff to the speaker. It's happening actually with a physical waveguide here, um, which allows you to project the mids at the same frequency, or the same rate that the uh, the other two sets of drivers are, are working. Um, handmade in Italy, beautiful winge uh, uh, wood on this one. It's really, really amazing speakers. And you talk about Amadi, and we're at what, 350 watts per channel? Watts per channel, yes. So you're able to push a ton of power, but it's that big, rich tube power into these Amadis. I mean, it, it is just, I don't, I don't even know how to describe it. I feel like it's, it's, it's all of that natural sound stuff, right? It's the fact that we've got an analog signal path and then all these natural materials, you get a sound that is warm, but not like bloomy warm. It just has this gentle, natural, even if it's punching. Yeah. Like it's really great. And the combination of Macintosh amplification, especially Macintosh tube amplification, and Sonus Faber speakers is providing us a very, very emotionally resonant sound as well, it, right? It is. It's, it's, we're not always looking for analytical precision, but what we always provide is envelopment in the music. Yeah, you could get lost in this room for an entire day. Yeah. Just spinning records. 
What we're going to now is our reference system, what we call reference system one. So in this room, as you look around, you'll see that every component in here is the best thing that Macintosh builds to do that thing. So if we actually come over to the, our source tower, we'll, we'll take a look at all of the brains of the system here. You'll notice also we're in the midst of setting up for an event tonight, so there's some stuff strewn about. Uh, it is a dual purpose house. We do events as well as the hi-fi tours and, and things of that nature. I can tell you this would be a fantastic place for a house party. It has been a fantastic place for a house party a couple times, and uh, we're going to do that tonight as well. So it's going gonna, it's gonna to be a busy day today. Um, but as we look at our sources here, we have uh, three sources hooked up to this system. Uh, we have the Macintosh MT10, so obviously this is the top end of what Macintosh does for analog sources. It's an absolutely beautiful machine. Uh, take a look at it, we, first thing we see is this huge platter, so big benefit from that is we have really even speeds, keeps all the inertia going. Um, as we go down here, we take a look at our digital sources. We have the MB20 uh, Bluetooth receiver, and we also have the MCD12000 uh, CD player, so it's SACDs, CDs, and it's our most capable DAC that Macintosh builds currently, so we run our streaming and the optical signal from our display into here. Very cool, so that's your digital hub. That's our digital hub. We also have a uh, Rune Nucleus Plus that we're using for our streaming, um, and then all of that goes into the C12000 preamp. So this is our reference level preamp. It's a two box unit. Uh, there's a lot of benefits from that. Obviously up here we have the low voltage stuff, so audio inputs, tubes, meters, anything that you want where actual signal is going through. Uh, and then down here on the controller, we have all of the controls. Yeah. So microprocessor, volume control, power input, input switching, the display. So anything that's a higher voltage is down here, less noise between those components, less interference. I mean, if I were to, as much as there's like heavyweight stuff in this room, if there's one thing I wanted to take home with me, this two chassis preamp is, like best of the best. It's it's really really amazing. And then when you combine it with the digital section of the MCD12000, which is the the overall intended full package, right? You have your beautiful dedicated analog and your beautiful dedicated digital. You put them together and you get this insanely capable package. So uh, what's powering these? So the, yes, as we go out from that insanely uh, uh, capable package, we go straight into an MC2KW on each side. So this is our largest mono block. Monoblock, yes, even though it is three boxes. There's a few reasons why it's three boxes. Uh, one of which is that you can't legally pull enough power from the wall to do 8,000 clean watts at peak from a single outlet, which is why. Wait, can you say that one more time? How much peak? 8,000 at peak. Clean. As Ridiculous. Well. Yeah, this is another area where we had to put in some electrical, so this room also had three dedicated 20 amps put in on each side to power these things. So the other big benefit of, if you're gonna do it in three outlets anyway in order to produce the power that you need to do, why not make it quiet? So, this is a fully quad balanced amplifier. The top box produces 1,000 watts of your music. The bottom box produces 1,000 watts of your inverted music which are then combined in the controller and output as 2,000 watts of program clean, noiseless music. And that's the thing we could never capture on video, but we did some demos in here and pin drop quiet, like yeah. dead quiet and then straight into amazing dynamic. It's, it's pretty crazy. One of the songs I like to, to d demonstrate that particular phenomenon with is Hurt by Nine Inch Nails. If you've ever listened to that on a really good pair of headphones or a really good system, you'll hear a lot of things you might not have heard before, and there's a very uh, a thorough, low volume static throughout the entire song. If you take that and you're playing it, it's like, oh, this is the ground, this is the noise floor, until you pause it, and there is no noise floor. Yeah, it's, it's pretty crazy. And then all of that goes out to a pair of our XRT 2.1s. So this is a monolithic beast of a speaker. Um, with, as was pointed out to me the other day, a squid tentacle looking array of tweeters, uh, but they do a very, very specific purpose. So this is a line array. A lot of benefits of having a line array. It's not the, the only speaker design out there, but for what we're trying to do here, it is the absolute perfect speaker design. So big benefit is that where we're standing, we only actually receive energy from a few of these tweeters. Where you're standing, you're receiving energy from all of the tweeters, 
which means you and us are getting the same relative volume because we're receiving less energy. Really, really great for even distribution of sound throughout the room, as we experienced when we listened to uh, that really bombastic drum solo from Mana. It feels yeah. like you're in a room with a drummer, not like you're in a room with speakers reproducing a drummer. At least that's my experience.